here's the story behind uh, this photograph. So I was very honored and excited and stoked to be invited to be part of this new art show called No Comply um, with some super amazing artists. Skateboarding's very basic DNA is that we don't comply. We are like, we, we take the world, we make it our canvas, we don't follow the rules, we make our own rules, we make our own language, we make our own way throughout life, and it's the coolest thing ever. So the idea was to, you know, write a bunch of compliance words on a tarp and then have like a, you know, um, hypnotizer, <laughs> if you will, a vortex. Vortex. And that, that you get pulled into as a, as society in general is always trying to pull you into what they consider normal. And then you have Andy Anderson, who not only one of my favorite skateboarders in the world, but also a very intelligent person who has been able to break every single nuance and structural core unwritten law in skateboarding and crossed over into every genre of skateboarding has been accepted and then has projected his own thinking and styles and ways that has influenced our culture and continues to influence our culture in ways that no one has ever done before. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fell. And look what happened. Oh, damn. <laughs> it fell into the shot. Dude, that's, <laughs> the <what? laughs> that's the one. Wait, whoa. Dude, I fell over. Like, you see the last one? Like, they died. Oh. <laughs> That's no way. That's what I yes. right there. Yes. That's so perfect. To have Andy do a no comply in front of a comply is like, I, I can't even tell you how fucking honored, man. Thanks Seriously, for teaching like, me how to no comply last night. Oh time. my god. He's like, we gotta shoot this. And I'm like, okay, I'm down. Collaborating with Andy is like, uh, it, you know, like no one else I've ever like worked with because it, it's like, it's like a session. So it's very fluid and like working with you. It's like it progressed throughout the entire time. Yeah. Yes, that was perfect. That was money. Yes. You like that one? Yeah, yeah that, that was, was good perfect. action. I forgot we were shooting photos, man. It's like one of my favorite things about working with you because it's just like a conversation between us, but it's also like an unwritten skateboarding conversation with our boards and our camera too. So yeah, it's like, like, holy pop it. Like, <laughs> they're like, when I saw Ray do it, it was like this and like, oh, like that. You channel Ray Barbie. Let's just give Ray Barbie some props on no complaints. Ray. could give your kind of like description of what you see happening in this photo because you have some really good insights I'd love to hear them. Well I'm stoked on it because I like that I'm leaving or going past the vortex like feel like especially out here in Venice dude this is such a vortex in Vancouver it was the plaza was the vortex there's like these certain locations that just have such a pull to them yeah and it's good and bad but it's extreme yeah and it, it's like so gnarly and, and so I love being near vortexes and not getting sucked into them right that's like my favorite shit like I try to find like these super intoxicating environments so for me and then having it all behind me it's nice you know like so like coming back to it and then it 
like stomping face, or like ugh, getting ready to getting ready to smash something. I love you said intoxicating environments because Venice is very much that. Anything oh. that you want is here, and anything you don't want is here. Yeah, and it's all right in your face. You know? Yeah. So, this photo was shot in front of our headquarters here at Juice Magazine, which just happens to be sitting at the foot of where the POP Pier used to be, which is where Jeff Ho and the Zephyr team were the first kind of non-compliers to like affect skateboarding in a universal, like change the game way. So I kind of channeled that and continue that generationally and like do it now in a current environment with something that you're doing. That's why I moved here. It makes a lot of sense that you're here because you are, I mean, dude, you're changing skateboarding in a way that is unsuspecting, but needed. Right? I don't think I could have done so, it from anywhere else, though. No, maybe not. This place gives you power to do it. This place is powerful. It does. You, like, to quote BCJ, like, you manifest essence here. Like, you manifest destiny. And it's like a, if you want to find it, you'll find it. But And if you're not searching for it, people are finding it in you. Oh. I'm just so excited for this photo. And he selected this one out of all the photos we shot, so I'm very happy. This is a total collaborative effort, which is our favorite way to work. It's really funny, because like the other day at the skate park, the cops were there, and they are like, oh, it's Andy Anderson. You know what I mean? And that's a trip. Yeah. To get to that level. Yeah. Or, or even like, um, like skating in my hometown of White Rock in south of Vancouver in, Van in uh, Canada. Skateboarding's still illegal in White Rock, but White Rock, the city of White Rock, gave me an award for being a skateboarder. So, it's this. That's amazing. It's everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's so cool. It's this gray zone. I'm being part of that. But the, for me, no comply is simple as. That bench is for skateboarding, not for sitting. Or maybe not, not for sitting. That bench is also for skateboarding. Yeah. And that's what no comply means to me. Is like, just because you invented that with a purpose doesn't mean that that's its only purpose. And we're going to expose the other purposes of what you put out there. You know, just like a, like a rock in the forest is a good ass chair. Yeah. But it's like, what the heck is the purpose of a rock? Like, I don't know. It doesn't stem from going against people sitting on benches. It stems right. from being inspired to skate a bench. Yes. And then people freak out at you and you're like... Yeah, non-compliance is not an attack. Non-compliance is a lifestyle and it's... A, yeah, it's, it's not an attack. Yeah, it's an actual... Skater's eye view and an observational way of living a life. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. How's it going? Yeah. That was ridiculous. That one felt good, too. Is it money? That one's dope. Look. You got the play kind of? Nice. And not complying means that one of the best things you can do in your life, in my opinion, is to question authority, question things. Because if you don't question things, then you're just going to submit, agree, allow, obey, acquiesce, accept, comply, abide, serve, surrender, join in, and follow. And skateboarders are not followers, man. Look at what happens when you skateboard. Like, it creates culture, it creates camaraderie, it creates individual self-esteem, it creates, like, failing upward, it, it creates failing upward. interpreting terrain, interpreting the world around you, and it, it, there's so many good things that skateboarding does that by not complying, we're giving people permission to progress in their own lives. And like, that's what non-compliance to me is.
Shout out to No Comply on my shirt, Troy from Well Kept Sustainable. He does all these like sustainable old old clothes and he spray paints them well kept and stuff. And Rad! It's a badass brand. Like upcycling? Yeah. Like not complying with the normal exactly. clothing industry? And then people are like, damn, you're selling so many. Like, how do you like order more? And he's like, dude, I have to find them all. And he like sages and blesses them. And, you it's know, like hunting for spots. Yeah, it's hunting. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hunting and gathering. A skateboard itself is a canvas, but when you paint, the paint ends up on a something, on a surface, and then it kind of stays there, maybe it diminishes over years, but it, that's kind of a thing. With skateboarding, the art appears and disappears within a split second most of the time, and that can be captured on camera through photos and videos. And then that's when, that's when it's like, exists like a painting. Mm -hmm. Where it, but the whole appearing and disappearing, sometimes only a second or three seconds. It makes me think of that Picasso quote where he like draws something on a napkin and throws it out and the girl picks it up and asks if she can have it. And he said like, uh, like a million dollars or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, hey, that, I, he, she's like, that took you 10 seconds to draw. And he's like, no, it took me like 40 years to draw. And it, that's like these little moments, like you do the no play, you land it, you roll away. If you blinked your eyes, you didn't even see it. But that took me 23 years to, to land. It's much more dramatic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's much more, there's more action to it. Like when I see Tony Hawk do an air in a yeah. foot ramp, yeah. do a big air and land right under the coping perfect. Yeah. I When I see that, I don't just think, wow, that was a nice air. I think about hundreds of times he aired that high and clipped. Yeah. And like <laughs> broke his rib or like lost a tooth or like, like you see that as a skater who's attempted these tricks when you see the trick done you're like oh i get it this is more than just a moment in time this is like full on hours and years of pain yeah we suffer for our art yeah it all relates back to art though because when you're we're Skateboarders in their very nature are multi-dimensional artists, I feel, I feel like. So yeah, yeah. We're not just performance artists, we're also photographers, we draw, we video, we edit, we make, you know, computer art. You, The right. whole thing you did for the Beyond the Street scene with like, a literally reverse engineering cityscapes and like, give it, like, you know, fire hydrants being systems and things, like it's a... That's a repurposing of, of terrain right. in, in an art realm in two dimensions. So we're, we're at, most skateboarders that I've ever met are very much multidimensional artists. So the performance art itself of actually skating and riding is one part of the art. Then there's art on your board. Then there's like, you know, your graphics. How you interact with the world is art too. So yeah. we're all like little multidimensional creative machines. Some artists you could do something and then put on on the wall and like kind of go away and like not be seen. Skateboarding like you are you can't do the it. thing. Yeah, on the, you're, you know, you're like, you off. are the thing. So it's like the sculptor is the sculpture. Totally. Wow. That was dope. Damn it, we might just have that might just turn into a life quote from Andy Anderson. That's why we relate so deeply to, to, to graffiti artists. Skating in the, in the skate park is like doing art in a studio. And street skating is like doing graffiti art. That's, oh, yeah. all I, that's the whole reason I wanted to go was to 
freaking do some freestyle in a bowl contest. And then I showed up and they had a freestyle pad in the middle of the bowl. And I was like, this is named for me. Yes! Yeah, it was perfect. That was pretty epic, dude. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Thanks Understand. for inviting me Thank you. This. Are you kidding me? What an honor, man. I'm just glad you said yes, and thank you for being my friend, and thank you for Juice all the support of the magazine, and like, yeah, more to come, you guys, but like, don't comply. Don't do it.